In the murky corridors of European power, a dynasty stands, their command shaping the fate of an entire continent. Some might say they transcend the definition of a family, embodying an invisible empire, their unseen hands shaping Europe's economic might. Their holdings reign over an amalgamation of conglomerates and institutions whose collective magnitude sends seismic tremors through the world's finances, amassing a towering market capitalization of an astounding $800 billion. Astoundingly, their empire employs a shocking one million people whose livelihoods are tethered to the colossal holdings of this shadowy dynasty. Their crown jewel investor has grown from its inaugural public offering in 1919 into a testament of unrivaled wealth multiplication. It has churned out a total shareholder return so astronomical that it dwarfs comprehension, an astounding 167,320 times the initial investment. This figure distills into an equally impressive compounded annual growth rate of 12.5%, a monument to their financial prowess and vision. Furthermore, in the transformative epoch of the 70s, this dynasty's enterprises were the beating heart of Sweden's economy, providing employment to a staggering 40% of Sweden's industrial labor force. They stood not merely as contributors, but as an indispensable pillar, a throbbing artery of the nation's economic lifeblood. Today we stand at the precipice, ready to lift the veil obscuring this potent dynasty. Are you prepared to unravel the mystery of such unparalleled wealth and influence? Let's plunge into the vortex of this silent yet thunderous might. At the helm of Europe's economic leviathan, a name echoes through history, a family nearly unmatched in power and influence, the Wallenberg family. Now, first we'd like you to picture Europe as a grand game board, its economic pieces meticulously moved by invisible hands. At the helm at any given time stands a family, often not the Rothschilds as one might presume, but rather the Wallenbergs. To put this into perspective, the Wallenbergs have historically held so much power that they had the ability to keep their country out of wars. Two cousins of diplomat Raoul Wallenberg played an officially sanctioned but controversial part in neutral Sweden's World War II diplomacy. Furthermore, just a couple of decades later, at the height of the Wallenbergs' preeminence in the 1970s, their various firms together employed an eye-watering 40% of Sweden's industrial workforce, even today, they employ more than one million people globally. Now, their commanding presence is not just restricted to their homeland of Sweden. It's an omnipresence that permeates every corner of the European economy, an influence as pervasive as the air we breathe. The Wallenbergs, via their regal investment vehicle Investor AB, hold the keys to some of Europe's most formidable corporate castles. Their scepter points toward AstraZeneca, a towering fortress in the pharmaceutical landscape and Ericsson, the lighthouse guiding the course of telecommunications. Of course, with the recent ups and downs of AstraZeneca, you can imagine what kind of power they wield if they are literally one of the big vaccine families. Their influence over these enterprises is not just of a casual investor. No, they truly steer these economic ships, charting their strategic course, shaping global healthcare and digital frontiers. Now let us turn to the Wallenberg's prized treasure, Skandinaviska Enskilda Banken, SEB. It's not just a bank. Picture it as a mighty river, its flow of finances nourishing the economic landscapes of Europe. Its reach is extensive, its grasp is firm, and its influence like the Wallenbergs is unparalleled. And there's more. This tale of European dominance doesn't end with healthcare, telecommunications and finance. The Wallenbergs' royal crest also adorns other corporate bastions like Atlas Copco and Saab, each a titan in their respective fields of industry and defense. Estimating the Wallenberg's total financial reach in Europe would be akin to calculating the stars in the sky. It's vast, it's breathtaking, and in many sectors outshines the Rothschilds. Their legacy, their influence on economic policies, their mastery of business practices is absolutely monumental. But of course now we must ask, just how did they get here? What familial history and strategic moves propelled them to this echelon of power? To answer this, we must wind back the clock a bit and settle our narrative in the rustic expanse of 17th century Sweden. In the midst of vibrant fields and serene lakes, a humble farmer by the name of Per Hansen works the relentless land. 
The farmland of Sweden, particularly in the region where the Hansen family dwells, proves to be a stern taskmaster. It calls for constant toil, but in reciprocation cultivates fortitude and fosters a robust sense of community among its dwellers. For these robust farmers, life is an ongoing waltz with nature, a challenge, but also a shared experience. These country folk are tucked away in the province of Västergötland, a land steeped in rich cultural heritage and natural splendor, marked distinctively by its fecund plains and ancient rock carvings. The thought of transforming into a vital cog in the wheel of European history seems as remote as the stars that twinkle overhead. Yet destiny is scheming its course. Among Hansen's sons, one decides to adopt a new name, Wallenberg. Little does he realize then that this name is destined to echo through the corridors of time, evolving into a symbol of power and influence in Europe. After a coda, our timeline now jumps to the 19th century. The curtain lifts to reveal a new protagonist, André Oscar Wallenberg, born in 1816. This intrepid spirit, who once navigated the high seas as a naval officer, would soon set his course towards uncharted waters, the world of finance. In the 1850s, Wallenberg found himself mediating loans for a sawmill owner in a twist of fate. It was a departure from his naval background, but his adventurous and tenacious spirit saw it as a challenge to be conquered. He had the soul of a voyager and the mind of a strategist, traits that served him well on the sea and in finance. The same man with whom he navigated this venture would later join him in establishing Zunzwald's first brewery, sparking the first flames of the Wallenberg banking empire. However, the Wallenberg tale truly takes flight with André's son, Knut Agathon Wallenberg. From a naval officer, he charted his path into the world of banking, and upon his father's death in 1886, he ascended to the throne of Stockholm's Enskilda Bank. Under his watchful eye, the bank blossomed into a linchpin of Sweden's industrial revolution, becoming a conduit connecting Swedish industry to the deep pockets of French capital markets. With wealth beyond measure, Knut Agathon emerged as a titan of Swedish society, even serving as Minister of Foreign Affairs during the turbulent war years of 1914 to 1917. Furthermore, the Wallenbergs did not merely wield their influence in the world of finance and politics. Education was another arena where they shaped the future. In 1903, Knut Agathon generously donated a large sum to create the Stockholm School of Economics. This prestigious institution continues to operate today, still under the watchful guardianship of the Wallenbergs. Furthermore, Marcus Wallenberg Sr., Knut Agathon's younger brother and successor as the bank CEO, was a legal scholar who gave birth to numerous companies and banks. He swooped in as a financial savior, rescuing ACA ABB from the brink of bankruptcy and founding the Federation of Swedish Industries. As we leap into the present, 2023, the Wallenberg name still towers high in Swedish industry. Jacob Wallenberg, the present patriarch, stands at the helm of Investor AB, a company founded by his ancestors in 1916. With a portfolio worth a staggering $65 billion, including stakes in giants like Ericsson AB, Atlas Copco AB, and EQT AB, the Wallenbergs continue to shape the landscape of corporate Sweden. In their homeland, the Wallenbergs' political foothold has been long established. Their connections span across all major political parties, with some of their family members having served in the Swedish parliament and others in key positions in public bodies. This influential network doesn't just give them a seat at the table, it's as if they have an entire wing of the grand dining hall. On the European Union stage, the Wallenbergs' reach is both subtle and profound. They have been instrumental in shaping EU directives on corporate governance and sustainability, leveraging their reputation as champions of responsible stewardship. It was under their influence, for instance, that the EU adopted stricter environmental regulations for businesses, a testament to their commitment to sustainable practices. Perhaps one of the most tangible demonstrations of their influence was the instrumental role they played in the EU's digital single market strategy, which sought to bring down digital barriers across member states. Of course, it is no coincidence that Ericsson, a Wallenberg enterprise, stands to benefit greatly from this policy. But it's not just policies and regulations where their influence can be seen. 
The Wallenbergs have fostered strategic relationships with some of Europe's most influential families and political figures. Their ties with the Agnelli family, who control Fiat Chrysler and the Juventus Football Club, have led to fruitful collaborations in the automotive and sports industries. Their alliance with the Betancourt family, major shareholders in L'Oreal, has resulted in strategic cross-holdings and joint business ventures. Through their controversial involvement in high-level forums like the Bilderberg Meetings and the World Economic Forum, the Wallenbergs have built hidden relationships with key European political figures, ranging from prime ministers to commissioners, making their influence felt across the political spectrum. All these connections, relationships and influences are not just a testament to their strategic acumen, but also underscore their significance in shaping the political and economic narratives of Europe. Their reach extends beyond mere business, deeply embedding into the socio-political fabric of the continent. Their influence isn't just potent, it's a masterstroke of strategic positioning and network building. They're not merely actors on the European stage, they're the directors of the grand play that is European politics and economy. Every tale of power and influence inevitably courts controversy, and the Wallenbergs are not exempt from this rule. One major controversy that ensnared the family was the infamous Telia incident. In 2018, their business empire was rocked when an attempt was made by Telia Company, a major telecommunications firm in their portfolio, to buy TV assets in Sweden and Finland. The deal ran afoul of EU competition authorities, leading to its ultimate collapse. Critics pointed their fingers at the Wallenbergs, painting the incident as a glaring example of their unchecked power and the need for stricter regulation. The incident tarnished the family's reputation and whispers of their unchecked influence echoed throughout Europe. In addition, the Wallenbergs have weathered criticism over their perceived nepotism. Critics argue that their control over some of Sweden's largest corporations through investor AB has led to an entrenched power structure that favors family members and their allies. This, they say, hampers fair competition and stifles new voices and innovation. While the Wallenbergs argue that their family-centric approach ensures stability and long-term strategic planning, detractors see it as an unhealthy concentration of power. Their significant influence on policymaking, both domestically and at the EU level, has not been without contention. Critics argue that their ability to shape policies to suit their own enterprises could potentially stifle competition. The aforementioned influence on the EU's digital single market strategy which largely benefited Ericsson, is a case in point, leading to questions about potential conflicts of interest and the undue advantage held by such influential families. However, the most severe criticism of the Wallenbergs perhaps revolves around their substantial wealth and the associated tax implications. Much like many ultra-rich families, their use of complex holding structures has led to accusations of tax avoidance. While all their operations are technically within legal boundaries, Critics argue that these practices contribute to wealth inequality and call for stricter tax regulations for such dynastic families. The Wallenbergs are not just puppet masters of economic and political power, they also weave a generous thread of philanthropy into the tapestry of their influence. They've established numerous foundations that collectively make substantial annual donations to scientific research and education. The Knut and Alice Wallenberg Foundation, for instance, is one of the largest private financiers of scientific research in Europe. Their munificent patronage has invigorated Swedish research in medicine, technology and the natural sciences, casting a beacon of hope for scientific innovation and progress. The Wallenberg's philanthropic exploits often cast a favorable light upon their public perception. Their generous endowments to research and education have been lauded as a tangible demonstration of their commitment to society. Their actions inspire admiration and gratitude in the public eye, softening any criticism of their influence and their wealth. But how do the Wallenbergs' philanthropic activities stack up against other influential families, you ask? Let us journey across the Atlantic to the land of the Rockefellers, a family with a similar legacy of wealth, influence and philanthropy. While the Rockefellers have made significant contributions to public health and arts, the Wallenbergs have chosen to make their mark in the realm of scientific research and education, displaying an equal, if not greater, commitment to societal advancement. 
On the home front, the Wallenbergs' philanthropy eclipses that of other influential European families. Their commitment to scientific research, specifically, dwarfs even the philanthropic endeavors of the Rothschilds. And unlike the Rothschilds, who have a more diversified philanthropic portfolio, the Wallenbergs have chosen to channel their wealth into a focused and strategic approach, ultimately leading to a more significant impact in their chosen fields. Now, with that all said, we'd like to see you in the comments. Are you familiar with the Wallenbergs and their immense influence? And is there another hugely powerful family you'd like us to cover here at Old Money Luxury? As you know, we attempt to interact with every comment and we'd love to hear from you. We'll see you there, and thanks again for joining us on another episode. Till next time, cheers.